what we've done in testing, we've now tested more than the entire world put together. The entire world put together, we have many more tests than they do, and better tests. And the reason we have more cases is because we have more testing. We actually have not conducted more tests than the whole world put together, although we have completed more raw tests than any other in individual country. You know, it's widely acknowledged that the federal government was behind the ball and botched the initial phases of testing. What's your reaction to the federal government's response on testing? It goes without saying that none of us are clear. If there is a national strategy none of, uh, and federal guidelines as it relates from social distancing to testing, to every other aspect of uh, procurement and, and uh, uh, manufacturing of PPE, you know, the way that the president said it, I would part ways in the, just in the sense that knowing what we see on the ground and talking to people, because we use, we, most of the work we do is in very marginalized uh, populations. Uh, when those people, uh, be they white, black, brown, anywhere in the country, see that they have an opportunity to be tested twice a week, that's when we will feel like a success. It doesn't do me much good to get into talking about the White House. It's going to be our failure as a, as a country, as, as citizens, if we don't, between advocating in our own ways for that production, et cetera, and, and, and to follow this up. We've put out with CORE a manual. It's open source on our website. It's a kind of idiot's guide to setting up test sites. It's not a complicated thing to do. You need the PPE, you need the tests, and you need a lab relationship. That can be, that can happen all over this country. And the success will be when every American has the opportunity to be, to be tested twice a week. And the more Americans that opt in on that program, uh, you know, the sooner this thing's going to be disarmed. There are a lot of people who don't want to get tested twice a week. They don't want to wear a mask. What do you think about incentivizing them to in some way? Maybe either tying it to unemployment benefits, tying it to PPP payments, the small business loans program. Do you think people will just do it through the goodness of their own hearts, if they're, as you said, looking at their own family? Or is there a way to mandate it or encourage it? The first thought is, is that it's about leadership. <clears throat> uh, this is, you, you know, the idea, it's not only the United States, it, every part of the world is doing their own thing on this. Um, and some of them in more interesting and successful ways than others, but nobody, nobody's bulletproof. Uh, and I think it really, I don't see um, a better path than leadership. And if it has to be leadership in the state, then so be it. I do think the president of the United States, whatever conflict I may have, if, if, and I'm not suggesting this could happen or not, but the incredible legacy that he would have no matter what's happened, no matter how horrible certain things may appear and, and be for certain families across this country already. If he did uh, attack this in a way that was that moved forward quickly to where people could be tested twice a week, where the scientific community could have the, the surveillance that they need, I really believe that, that this be, that opening this economy will happen sooner this is at the very least a, a mandatory rehearsal that this country has to have to understand preparedness, to understand solidarity, to understand how to group together and take these things on, whether it's a, a pandemic, a dirty bomb, or, all, or, or a hurricane, or all the other things that are coming our way. Uh, it's, it, this, is, this could be a great bonding moment. I just encourage the president and all the governors you know, I'm, I'm spoiled because I come from a, a state that has done that, and I don't, and that doesn't make our state bulletproof. But we are blessed to have Governor Newsom and, and Mayor Garcetti because they, they, they really have been, as much as possible within the complexity of uh, political position, uh, doing an extraordinary job. And, 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 and now I'm in New York City where I, I think that uh, if there's another governor <clears throat> that, that I would be excited to work with, it would certainly be Governor Cuomo. You, uh, you sound a lot less partisan now than people think of you in the past, because I, you know, I presume it's because you're in the trenches, you want to get things done, and the politics maybe aren't first for front of mind. You tweeted, rage and skepticism have their place, no question. Still, when dynamic local or state leaders combine forces with dynamic constituency, they cannot be denied.
those who don't believe that become the problem. Yeah, I think I got a little bit tired of myself believing that my dinner table passion conversations were translating or or, or, or being productive. Uh, and and I've always had great relationships with people of, of varying opinions. I've had bitter arguments. Uh, sometimes that has to do with, you know, my own travels, the way the, the lens through which I've seen the world may be different from other people. But, uh, we, you know, in humility, I am also just one more person saying, what the hell is going on? We better work together in, in all aspects of this. But COVID-19, uh, we, we have a duty to make this uh, a silver lining. We all think about the various silver linings possible every day. We have to to keep ourselves somewhat sane. Uh, but, but there are so many possibilities of that. And it's really the only way we're going to honor these the tens of thousands of people that have died from this thing who were who were here with us, grandparents, fathers, mothers, et cetera, even some children, they were just here with us alive a minute ago. And now we imagine them piled up like wood in the rain. And it, it, the only way that they get a, an honorable uh, passing is, is if we commit ourselves to the silver linings. How do you understand how partisan every element of this pandemic has become, even the debate about reopening? I mean, even last week, there were protesters in Orange County, just south of Los Angeles, your home beach, protesting the beach closures. Uh, the president is criticizing people who disagree with him. It, it seems like every aspect of this can't re be removed from the partisanship. How do you think about that? Well, what we see, uh, like as I said, principally in, in quite marginalized areas, um, is that the, 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 the larger number of people who are the most vulnerable and the most without and who have been uh, before this COVID-19, they are the ones who are largely uh, most concerned about opening too fast. And I do find it upsetting to see that people who have large groups of people who have never known any oppression uh, or going without of any kind suddenly on their own behalf are saying, free me, free me, free me, without real concern. But the part of that I, I can be empathetic to because living in quarantine is not something anybody expected to do. I just think we are in too much of a rush and too many people who ha are the haves are making the argument uh, for opening without listening to those who don't have the same access to health care and what that's going to mean for their families if this thing goes wrong. But why do you think that why do you think there's a rush to get back? Do you think it's politically driven? Do you think it's just all about the economy? Well, I think there's been so much misinformation that people are fatigued where they would be otherwise inspired. You know, it's one of those times where you gotta look the country in the eye and say, actually, we have to sacrifice completely. We can't do it halfway. And if we do that together, we can make all this go much quicker and much more effectively and save a lot of lives. Do you think that we have done what you just said? We have stepped up to, uh, to, to meet the moment that, I, I don't mean necessarily our political leadership, maybe some have, maybe some haven't, but the, Americans, the American people have basically took the guidance and went home and I think largely car. largely that's true but the guidance has been chaotic uh, and so it we you know yes it's in the American people to stand up that I'm seeing I see it with our volunteers and we've got 450 of them in their own neighborhoods working doing this stuff for their own communities so do, are, are Americans willing to step step up yes. You go to the stores, you see some diligence. You also see, uh, y you know, the wiring that it takes to really do this right has to, again, be hammered into us when we go online, when we read our newspapers, when we watch the news on television. We've got to have a, you know, a streamlined thing because it's, it's hard every day to realize what, where your hand goes, what it touches, how far you, away you are from people, what is the air and the aerosol. What did they tell me yesterday different from today? What part of it is common sense? And I think common sense